There's a lot of build-up to a college football season. How, how good does it feel to get a win under the belt? Good, yeah. They're too hard to come by. I don't care who you play or how it goes. Wins are too hard to come by. You take every one you get, and everyone's going to be different. And, um, you know, we win as a team, we lose as a team. I, I love where we're at as a team, and I think the future is crazy bright. Uh, there's like a Jay Hill cam on the broadcast. We saw you quite a bit on the sidelines. You've got high <laughs> energy as usual. What was the decision to stay on the field rather than maybe go up into the booth? Well, I think I have a better time or easier time making adjustments down on the sideline. I like to look the guys in the eyes and just see exactly where they're at. Um, I like the emotion of the game and how the game's going and feeling. And I think sometimes that can uh, affect the calls that I want to send in just based on how the guys are responding to what's going on. That's a good answer. Uh, to get a shutout must be just awesome, too. I know that's mm -hmm. always the idea, but when it actually happens. Well, it was awesome, and it was great for the players. I loved the way they flew around. For a first game, the way they executed was awesome. Uh, that's about as good a tackling first game as I've seen. Just very few missed tackles. Um, bottom line, I thought the players responded outstanding, and I thought the assistant coaches did a phenomenal job having their position groups ready to go. I'm sure you had an idea during spring ball and fall camp who you wanted your leaders to be. Now that you got to see them do their leadership thing on the sidelines, how, how, how do you feel about them? It's still developing, but a lot of the playmakers stepped up. You know, Eddie Heckard, uh, Jacob Robinson, Tyler Batty, Ben Bywater, Max Tooley, those guys, I mean, and there's a lot of others, but those guys stood out, made plays, um, and I would consider those guys to be some of our best leaders because they're the ones that make plays in practice and in the games um, and really lead by example. Every head coach does their game day differently. Sorry, Jay. Um, you've coached alongside a lot of different guys. How do you like Kalani's game day? What does he do a little bit different? Well, I love Kalani, and the players love him. And he does a phenomenal job of just motivating the players, getting them excited to play. The guy knows his X's and O's. I mean, he's, he's a phenomenal leader, and the guys rally behind him. So after the game, Jacob Robinson said, hey, I'd throw at me too. Look at me, I think was his quote. Is he undersized for a Division one corner, or is he about the right? No, and I hope they keep throwing at him because they'll keep seeing similar results. Jacob Robinson can play, and he's got great ball skills. He's got great feet. He's going to be a really good player um, throughout the rest of this year, and you know we're lucky to have him. Are we going to see that nickel package a lot with Camden, uh, Eddie, and, and Jacob? No, I think it depends on what opponents are trying to do to attack us. But the more people try to spread us out, the more nickel that we're going to be. Um, and the way those guys continue to play, I mean, it's hard to take them off the field. They've been so successful. Was Eddie a nickel for you at uh, Yes. At yeah. Okay, so and as good as one of, as I've coached, I've coached some really, really great ones. Eddie Heckard's an elite nickel. Um, when he moves inside, and then obviously when we're, when we're in our 4-3 package, he moves outside. But um, he really has a phenomenal feel for that inside corner spot. What makes him such a, like he was an FCS All-American, what makes him such a perfect fit in your scheme? Well, he's physical, super instinctive. Um, he's got ball skills. He, he's got a competitive nature about him that he just hates to lose doesn't get beaten as a consequence. He knows how to stay on top. He knows how to stay in good position as a corner. You know, really, that's what it's all about. If you can stay in a great position as a corner and not let guys stack here or get on top, then you're going to have a chance to be successful, and he's really good at that. You feel pretty content with the starting 11 and we're run that back the same this week against SUU? Well, I don't know if content's a good word for me. I'm never content. We're always looking to get better. We're always looking to you know, improve in different areas. We still have a long ways we can go with the scheme. We have a long ways we can go with just overall uh, execution. The guys know there's still things to clean up. There's things I can clean up in, in the things I'm calling. So um, it's never perfect. You're always looking for that next step, that next edge. Do you feel like you're farther ahead, though, after, after pitching and getting a shutout uh, than maybe when you, you know, it, it's a value of re reestablishing this game? Well, I think that's a phenomenal confidence booster in that the players see if you do things right, you trust the process, you trust what we're calling, that good things can happen. And, um, you know, first shutout in nine years here, That's that, that, that speaks for itself. Does SUU have your defensive players' attention? Oh, yeah. Heck, yeah. We, we overlook nobody. Every team that we go up against is going to have our full attention and focus. And the reality is those guys – had a really good shot to beat Arizona State last week. And if you overlook anyone in today's world, you're not very smart. What were your assessments of the, the defensive line? Uh, how many guys do you 
plan to kind of play at that spot going forward? Well, I thought they played really good, and I thought Coach Pepinga and Coach Puha did a great job of having those guys ready to play. I really liked Jackson Cravens, the way he played in the game. Um, yeah, but but that whole interior group, nice Amahe, um, you know, John Nelson played really good in that game. Uh, that, that group played good, Caden Hawes. Uh, we got to continue to be physical in there, continue to work on technique and pad level. That's something that progresses as the season goes on. We need a little bit more production in the pass rush off the edge from the defensive end group. Were you disappointed with that, that only one sack so coming out of that game? Well, for as much as we blitzed, we should have had more pressure. I think we had 10 QB hits, um, which is a good number, but we need more sacks. We need more balls to leave the quarterback's hands in that opportunity where the DBs have a chance to break on it. Uh, and again, that's something that we'll get better at. we got to be a little nastier off the edge. Touched on Ryan Rico a little bit yesterday in your in your show and just kind of his ability to flip the field. What kind of a weapon is that for the defense to have a punter? Well, there's a reason why there's so many NFL scouts out watching him. I mean, he's he is a weapon, and he's got big time ability. He stays poised, even when we were backed up at times. The guy would hit huge bombs. Um, I still think his best football is in his future. I mean, that guy's just scratching the surface of how good he can become, uh, but. He's a true weapon, and he's, he's a big-time leg that doesn't come around every year.